Well, the one thing we got out of the last video was that this comes out of the box with bad compass health because it's not powered by this flight controller from USB power like on a lot of other controllers. So we did get something positive out of that first one, even though there was a lot of negative in that first one because I'll try to look up this GPS module based on the numbers right there along the bottom of that barcode, see if I can find it that way. But as I was putting it back in, I noticed there's some writing on the silk screen just above the connector. And it made me even more frustrated because look at this. Reading from right to left, it's I squared C clock voltage. You are receive, you are transmit, ground, and I squared C for the compass data. The I squared C bus is the two outside wires. And that is not how the flywoo is wired. That's not even the way the flywoo voltage is. So if I had plugged this in to the flywoo, I might have blown up the flywoo. So at least I, I, I do have one thing that I'm happy about right now. I can tell the pin out on that connector and that'll keep me from blowing up this flight controller or any GPS or this GPS that I connect to it. So I'm going to take that as a positive thing. I really need positive things lately. <laughs> All right, so moving right along, I went to hewing.com and... It looks like this particular airplane's right there on their top page with learn more right here. Oh, yeah, it's other things down here. So I'm going to click the learn more. Right off the bat, I do learn more. This particular controller seems to be a FX405 flight controller. Uh, let me see if I can verify that real quick. And right out of the box, we can see again, it shows us here in the message, it's Arduplane 4.3.5. And it thinks it's a Maytech F405TE. RC out initializing. 405TE. Quad plane initialized frame truck. Copter, it looks like. INS starting. Calibrating barometer. MS4525. That's a airspeed sensor. I don't think there's one on this. So they've got airspeed use turned on. But the Ardu, uh, Ardu planes able to synthesize airspeed and wind speed so we'll look at that way down the road airspeed one and it failed Ardu pilot ready PWM on 1 through 10 yikes is there not a 11 and 12 I'm going to be real bad trouble on this I'll show you why later Throttle fail safe. They already got that set up. Flight mode circle. That's on a long uh, fail safe. And then RTL after a few seconds if it does that. Interesting stuff. But we'll go back to our information. Oops. So FX405. Ah, rats, did that say FX405? Let's look again, just for kicks and grins. Mm, does it say FX405 here? It just says F405TE. So FX405 is probably He Wing's designation for that flight controller. We're just banking all this information away as it came out of the box to reference later after changes are made. Uh, Pre-configured. 
you want to experience the factory parameters, which surely I do, I do, I do, you just need to hook up your receiver. I'll be putting the Express LRS on this one. Configure the receiver. Perform radio calibration. Yikes. There's a reason, excuse me, there's a reason I say yikes there, but match the flight modes to your radio and you are on your way to do your first VTO VTOL takeoff. Yes, I've never done this before. Looks like it's got a little build video that I will watch off of this video I'm making. We'll read down just a little bit here real quick. To spread a large space, carry batteries, dedicated front FPV camera mount. White foam is now the same high density version as the gray foam. Well, I have the black foam or gray foam. Better cooling, easily detaching wings. Just looking for any information. This right here is wonderful information. Thank you. Maximum cruise time, 65 minutes. Well, how do you know that? What battery do you have in it? What's included? Motors. Da, 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 da. Quick release wiring plug for the main wings. Choice whether you have the flight controller included. I did. Uh, without FX405. Cries your own radio receiver battery suggestions here. Don't say a darn thing about lithium ion, but they do have a weight here. Recommended weight for batteries. That's sweet. Never seen that before. VTL perimeters are preloaded. Or for reference only, fragile risk. Well, of course they would say that. But I bet you the primitives are in there are their best guess at what should be pre-loaded. I've watched Bonafide Pirate flying a regular T1 Ranger lately, and he says exactly the same thing. That they're close, but he's making changes to them. And we'll get into that way down the road, too. Yeah, tell must be powered on 4S or lower. So no 6S experience here, but that's okay. Check out the notes on the instructions page before flight. We'll stick that right over there. Featured photos. This shows that UB, USB connector where we talk to our new mission planner with it. Ah, this one over here with four connectors is an RCN. Hopefully I can get the LRS on that with CRSF rather than having to use a UART port down here. They do show the BN 250Q GPS here. Although I can't find any information about it on the internet. USB cable. This is the power controller. It goes underneath it. And I won't even really be able to see that one. Here we have some videos to watch after the airplane will take off. And that looks like the end of this. Shipping, yep, there's just really not much more here for us. Let's go back real quick and look at the one tab that we saved right over here. Uh, and this is the manual. All right, so I'll download this. To download the PDF manual, click the links below. So I will be working through this. Okay, let me get off of here for a second, download all that stuff, and we can start going through it. 
So let's start with instruction manual um, number one, part one. It shows you the same thing I did, everything coming out of the box. By the way, I guess it's okay to put the wheels on it. It'll keep the uh, props in the front off the ground when it lands, but they're not going to roll. They're basically skids for me. So, remove the contents from the box, including the USB wires for the flight controller. Prepare your radio receiver and battery. And don't even have a battery yet. Connect your preferred receiver to the RCN port of the FX405 flight controller. Note, ground, 5 volt, and signal line. So that's on this side of that controller. Right down through here for Crossfire and ELRS. I'm going to put ELRS on this one. So that would be ground, 5 volts, tr transmit and receive out of the module. i got a f suspicion that down here it's receive and then transmit. There's for an S bus. So we'll go ahead and get that done. And right here I have a little ELRS receiver on a four pin uh, DuPont connector that I just sorted up. Ground voltage, transmit and receive. Pull that right out of there. There's our little receiver. And that's going to go right there, those four pins right there with ground on the back. Well, that is not going in there very easily at all. I took out the connector right next to it, the three-pin DuPont. And you can see the pins are all the way over against the plastic. So I'm really going to have to fuss and fight with this to get it in there. And then I don't know if I'll get that other three-pin back on. Well, I did get it in there, and I did get the other three pin back on. I had to take a little jeweler's screwdriver and put between the pin and the plastic and bend it just a little bit towards the three pin, and then it went on. Bummer is, is if I've got that yellow and white wire reverse transmit and receive, it's easiest to change that on the uh, DuPont end. I'll have to take it back out, put it back in. But it'll probably go the second time more easily. And there we are on the other end. I bent those wires down and put the shrink wrap that comes with the receiver on it and shrunk it. Now we'll hot glue this someplace right inside the model. There we go. I just hot glued it right there. I hope it doesn't interfere with the battery. Comes around, goes in right there. There's a little ELRS module, the one with the tower type antenna right there on the chip. Now that we've got this step done, we'll go on, turn on your radio, hook up the battery to your T1 Ranger. This is an important step because I've already figured it out because I've tried this already. This flight controller does not power up your RC receiver on USB power either. <laughs> then connect the USB cable like this. And it tells you to go here. Open Mission Planner software on your PC. If you do not have one yet, visit our website for the download link here. This is where you can go and download Mission Planner. I already have it, of course. On the top right, select the correct COM port. Click Connect. <laughs> After successfully connecting to the flight controller, please ignore any errors and proceed to next step. Our new pilot automatically recognizes SBUS input. You do not need to perform anything. For Crossfire and ELRS, please follow the steps below. And those steps below, set anything up at the receiver, click on the config tab, go to the full parameters list. Boy, this is blurry. <laughs> My eyes are going bad again or something. In the search box, Type board alt config. Yeah, that's that one that I was wondering if it was going to make the 
five inch quad not look at its gps properly but we're going to go ahead and set that again from a zero to a one right here then we're going to do our click right we'll stop right here and go through those steps here we are all connected we're supposed to come over here full parameters list board alt config right there change this from a zero to a one for crsf actually i'm going to write those parameters out there and then it says go to serial six so that particular plug on that controller must be serial six got a serial one and a serial two on it uart ports on it so now we go back here serial six protocol and it tells us to change the value from zero to 23 is it actually a zero no it's a minus one <laughs> But we're going to change serial 6 to 23, which is RCN. That's the CRSF 23 tab right parameters. Let's see what we got here. Congratulations, you're all done. No, you're not, but you're done with this part. And this is reference S bus, nothing. CRS and ELRS board alt config equal one zero six protocol equal twenty three. Important after performing the above before you proceed, disconnect on the top right and disconnect from the USB cable and the PC. Disconnect the battery. In other words, we're going to do a full uh, restart on the flight controller after this change technically if i disconnect the usb you'll notice the uh, mission planner disconnects up here so now i'm going to connect the usb back and click connect here and like i told you When you connect the battery again, CRSF and ELRS should be working now. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the radio. Welcome to OpenTX. And we'll connect the battery to it. And I seem to have a connection. Let's go back over here. I'm getting ahead of the documentation here. There we go. Radio calibration. Yep, I just moved the stick and you can see the yaw moving. Now then, yep, my switches aren't working. I was afraid of that. Uh, let me see, I got aileron roll working correctly. I could just keep out of the elevator there with it. Do that on the quads and everything. Uh, elevator, that would be pitch. That's working fine. Throttle. Throttle is not working. I do think I have a throttle cut switch, though, set up. So, eh. And rudder. That would be yaw. That's all working correctly. And I'm not sure what channel. This is all has to do with my radio, that the throttle isn't working perfectly. Let me see if I can run in real quick and disable that throttle cut. Okay, I didn't exactly disable the throttle cut in the radio. I just need to put it on another switch, but I found out what switch it was on. And you can see now my throttle works perfectly. No problem. My throttle cut switch is on now, so it doesn't work. Throttle cut, it'll go straight to the top. Bink. There we go. So all that's good. I'm going to have to move my throttle cut around on the radio, but that has nothing to do with this build. So everything there is working perfectly. The problem here is none of our other switches are working. Uh, so we'll proceed in our instructions. 
Ah. Radio calibration. Turn on the radio, connect the battery, connect USB, open mission planner, click setup, click mandatory hardware, click radio calibration, uh, click on calibrate radio. Ensure your transmitter is on, receivers power connected, ensure that it does not have power, no props. Okay, this is all stuff mission planner is going to do. Click OK and perform the instructions of, as shown. Move all your control sticks and flight mode switches to their maximum. Uh, and then, of course, at the end, click OK. That's a mission planner function. Click OK. Now observe mission planner recognizing your new input sticks values on your own radio and change as shown on the moving. And the changes are shown on the moving red color lines. OK. Let me talk about this for a second. The reason I'm hesitating just a bit here is inside their setup when they did it at the factory they had already done this with their setup and you'll notice basically most of theirs well this is different from what I saw in another thing today got 1100 1500 and 1900 1500 1100 for everything except a few things in there uh, for some reason the throttle is a, got a different center position I in my personal opinion I think that is because of the way the throttle works I think this is a differential thrust airplane therefore one motor will be ramped up higher to turn like let's say the right motor will go higher to turn left the left motor will go higher to turn right just in rpms so this may have something to do with that also you'll notice they've got their tilt motor front left at 950 and the top at 2150 if I do a radio calibration all these numbers right here in these three lists are going to change uh, my opinion we'll see if they do or not after I do it so I'm a little worried that some of these like let's say this front left tilt motor needs to be down at 950 and up at 2150 to work correctly so I don't know what's going to happen there but I'm going to follow their instructions but I have this information right here if you remember saved so I can come back in it to it and put it back the way it is right now or I can watch this video as my lab notes and put it back so we're actually going to come in here and I'm going to make sure of my radio set up before I do this one to tell you the truth so let's back out for just a second Okay, guys, I'm going to break this video here. It doesn't seem like a good place to break it, which you're going to find when I start up the next one. It's a very good place to break it because some information I need to do a good radio calibration is hard to find. And I'll tell you why in the next video. See you there. Thank you.